Yes. So now, Wes, do you believe in uh, just paying players for what they've done in the past? Because don't get me wrong. Like, I think that Jimmy Butler and the Miami Heat have extremely overachieved in terms of, you know, Jimmy Butler has been great with what he's been given compared to, like, you know, teams that are stacked up like the Phoenix Suns and the Clippers. So with Jimmy Butler pretty much getting older, he's 35 years old. You really can't necessarily count on him to play 60 to 65 games. And then also, too, he kind of obviously, you know, load manages and doesn't really try in some games. So do you believe in giving Jimmy Butler this max deal when we already te technically gave, you know, we gave him $150 million. You know, we brought Kyle Lowry. We've done a lot and went over for him. And he's also doing things that Bron and D-Wade didn't get to do. So, we, so you know what I mean? So from the Heat standpoint, I think that they've been pretty generous. So do you think that we should pay him? You know, how do we move forward with Jimmy Butler at such a high price? I, I I think I understand it from both sides. Like, if you're Jimmy Butler, you walk into Pat Riley's front office and you want the two years, $113 million, which essentially is one year extra added on at $50 plus million dollars a year. He's already under contract, uh, not this year, coming up for 48 and a half, and then the following year for 52 and a half, and then this one would add another one for like 56 and replace the 52 with another 56, so... He'd be making a lot of money, basically, and bas and securing his NBA future. And he's going to walk into that office and say, all right, I just captained us through the second greatest era in Heat history. And if you don't pay me, Philadelphia will. So what are you going to do about it? And he's going to have a point. And the Heat are going to say, well, you played 60 games last year. You really only showed up for maybe 40 of them. And then you were injured in the playoffs because we were in the playing tournament, in part because of your lack of availability. And they'll also have a point. And I think both of these sides are at very different ends of this negotiation right now. And it's very interesting, and it's why I won't rule anything out. I think that the Heat will have to come to the table with something. I, have it, I, I find it really difficult to believe that they're going to be able to stare Jimmy Butler in the face and say, we don't care. We don't care if you're happy. We don't care if you're upset about the extension. Just play another year. And have that work out to the point of Jimmy Butler being in a Heat uniform next year. And I do think that Jimmy Butler is still a really good player, but he's just not the same player that he used to be. But he could still be the guy who could help this team get... If you're talking about getting this team back past the Boston Celtics and all these... Jimmy Butler has to be a part of that, right? Like, even if you just swap Jimmy Butler for Donovan Mitchell straight up, which Cleveland wouldn't do, but just hypothetically, that doesn't get you closer. I mean, he gets you a little bit closer just because Donovan Mitchell's a little bit more available in the regular season. You'd be, probably, probably have a better seed. But I don't know that gets you materially up to the top teams in the league. So you do got to find a way to make it all work. If you can't get Donovan Mitchell, though, that's where all these things are sort of weirdly connected. If you don't get Donovan Mitchell, though, then what is your motivation to keep Jimmy Butler around? Because at that point, there is an argument to say, like, you know what? We're not going to give you the extension. We're not going to make things even harder for us to get that star player in the future by having, this, having you under an even larger, more expensive extension. If you can go get that money from Philadelphia, have at it, dude. Like, go for it. And, and I, like I, that's why I can't rule anything out. It's all interconnected. It's, it's crazy how this works out. And the craziest part about it is that neither team, the Cavs or the Heat, can negotiate legally. We all know how this really works. But they can't negotiate legally with their own players, these extensions, until after the finals are over. So all of this stuff is going to be happening concurrently. Right? So if you're the Heat, I think you try to buy in on the culture what you've got established with Jimmy Butler, the relationship that you do have and say, give us some time here. We're going to try to get you Donovan Mitchell. Because what you were saying before is like, yeah, they've been really generous and Jimmy Butler didn't hold up his end of the bargain. You can argue that Miami didn't hold up their end of the bargain either. They never got that other star for him. They tried to go get KD. They tried to go get Damian Lillard. They didn't do it. They failed at that. So they didn't necessarily hold up their end of the bargain either. And so maybe there's a middle ground here is what I'm trying to get at. And um, maybe that's something that they can do. But we'll see. Money, money changes everything in the NBA, as we know.